The first thing that we're going to work on in this section is the algebra of functions. And basically what that means is we're going to take two separate functions and we are going to do algebra or we're going to do math with them. Meaning we're going to add them, subtract them, multiply them, and divide them. Well, this math between the functions works the exact way that you would assume it to be. So if we want to add two functions and apply x, that means we can actually just apply x and then add the two functions. And that works the same way for any of these operations here. If we want to subtract the two functions, we can just subtract them separately. If we want to multiply the two functions, again, we can just multiply them separately. And last but not least, if we want to divide the two functions, we just divide them separately. And of course, this one has a, an extra stipulation. Your denominator function cannot be zero because we know that anything divided by zero is undefined. So we just have to make sure that your denominator doesn't work out to be zero. All right, so these work out the exact way that you would expect them to. So let's jump right into an example. The first one gives me my f function is defined as x squared minus 3. The second one gives me my g function, which is 2x plus 1. And what we're trying to find is f plus g, so we want to add these two functions together, and we want to figure out what that is when it's evaluated at 4. Now we can do these two separate ways. Let me show you the easier of the two ways first. In our last slide, we just learned that when we are trying to add two functions, we can actually do the addition last. So that's the first way that I'm going to do it here. I know that this can be f of 4 plus g of 4. So I need to figure out what f of 4 is. And I do that by just substituting 4 into my x value. 4 squared minus 3. That gives me 16 minus 3, which gives me 13. So f of 4, I can substitute in 13 plus, and then I need to figure out what g of 4 is by substituting 4 into that function. 2 times 4 plus 1, which gives me 8 plus 1, which gives me 9. So I can substitute 9 in for there. So if I want f plus g of 4, that's the same thing as f of 4 plus g of 4, which we just simplify individually like we learned way back in when we introduced function notation. We know that that simplifies down to 13 plus 9, so we can do our simple addition here. 13 plus 9 gives me a 22, and so that's my final answer. Now, since this problem here is actually applying a number, this is probably the easier way to do this problem. Now, in the next examples, moving past this slide, we won't be applying numbers, so let me show you the other way to do this problem. And I would do that by adding my two functions together first, so I can figure out f plus g of x, which is f of x plus g of x, and then I can substitute in my for variable for there. So I need to take my f of x, which was defined as x squared minus 3, and add it to my g of x, which is defined as 2x plus 1. Let me simplify this. So I can drop the parentheses. They're not there for any necessary reasons at this point, so I just can combine like terms. So x squared plus 2x and then my constant terms of minus 3 plus 1 gives me a minus 2. So this is what my f plus g of x is. Now, if I wanted it at 4, which is, of course, what I wanted in this problem, I substitute 4 and for my x. So f plus g of 4 would be 4 squared plus 2 times 4 minus 2 or 16 plus 8 minus 2, or 24 minus 2, which of course gives me the same answer that I got previously of 22. So you can see that there's two routes to take in this problem. 
But if it gives you a number to substitute in, like I've shown you many times here, if we are substituting four into this problem, the easier way is to figure out what each of these are evaluated at four, and then your last step is to add them together. So I've shown you how to do part A in two different ways. So I suggest that you take that knowledge and use it to apply it in part B. So pause the video and see what answer that you come up with. Okay, I'm going to do it the easier way here. So I'm going to take my f of negative 1 and I'm going to multiply that by my g of negative 1. So I'm just using the property that we learned back here. So f times g is the same thing as f times g, of course. So I want to figure out what my f of negative 1 is. Let me get rid of all of this for part a. So my f of negative 1 is equal to negative 1 squared minus 3, or positive 1 minus 3, or negative 2. So I can substitute that in for f of negative 1. g of negative 1 is 2 times negative 1 plus 1, which gives me negative 2 plus 1, or negative 1. And I want to multiply that by my first. So f of negative 1, I substituted my answer here of negative 2. And g of negative 1, I substitute my answer here of negative 1. So my last step then is just to multiply them because that's what this problem wanted, f times g. So negative 2 times negative 1 gives me positive 2. And so we have evaluated f times g of negative 1. All right, so we've learned how to evaluate these more specifically when we're substituting in numbers. Let's see what it looks like when we don't want to substitute in numbers. And so I've defined two different functions here. My f of x equals x squared minus 3, and my g of x equals square root of x minus 7. Now, I want to do quite a few different things with this. You can see I have five different parts of it. The first one is to substitute in a number like we did in the last two examples. But my last four parts leave it as x. So we actually don't want to substitute in any number. So that's what we do, what I showed you on the first example. We just figure out how to add, subtract, multiply, or divide those functions depending on what each individual part might ask. I suggest that you work these problems on your own and see what answers that you come up with. And notice not only does it ask you to simplify them, but it asks you to find the domain of them. And that will only apply in the last four parts since we have x as a variable and not as a number. And in the next video, I'll come back and work these out for you.